Uh, we were talking last week, and that slide is still up there. Thank you, Melanie. Um, uh, this was the first blank that we filled in on the little globes that we had given you. Uh, the original Earth, Genesis 1, chapter 1. I don't need to show you the slide. Uh, Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning God created, the word is bara, He made from nothing the earth and the universe, the heavens that we know, and we look up into the sky and we see, and as God made all those things. When? In the beginning. Uh, what we are, and there's a couple of things tonight, I'll try my best if I slip into what I believe is my opinion, I will be quick and be ready to tell you, look, I don't have chapter and verse, this is just my opinion. Um, and there are some things, you know, in the church, uh, we believe in at New Life, there are some things in the gospel, in the church today, we should hold what we refer to as open-handedly. There are some things we should hold on to closed-handed. Uh, by that, I mean this. There are some things, I'm going to share some things with you tonight. Really what I'm teaching is, it's not a new theory, it's been around for a long time, it's called the gap theory that between Genesis 1, 1 and between Genesis 1, 2, there's a gap of time. Uh, and so it's referred to as the gap theory. There are some people who don't believe that theory, and that's okay. If, if I'm wrong, if they're right, we're both going to heaven. Don't get worked up over it, okay? Someone has a different opinion uh, of, you know, how the earth was made, or if Adam was the original six days, and that's how old the earth is, 6,000 years. There are some people who teach that. I, I have difficulty with it based on nothing else other than scientific evidence and fossils. So I struggle with the earth is only 6,000 years old and they can find you know, a dinosaur that lived 800,000 years ago. So it's like, oh, uh, how do you explain that? Well, God is God. I, I, to me, you ought to have a logical answer. So I like the gap theory for that reason, but it's just that. It's a theory. So um, although I'm showing you what I believe God's word says right now, there'll be some things that I'll say to you and I'll try as best I can to say, now, this is just my opinion and it doesn't matter. I don't want you to think what we're teaching doesn't matter. It matters that you understand these things. But there are certain things in the Gospels that, and in God's Word that we should be open-handed about. It doesn't matter. Uh, I talked to you a little bit last week about the Great Tribulation. I believe there's, there's coming a tribulation. There's coming a rapture of the church. Some people believe it's before the tribulation. Some people believe it's in the middle of the tribulation. Some people believe it's at the end of the tribulation. I don't care when you want to believe it is, as long as you believe you're going. <laughs> We're not, you're not going to get to heaven and God's going to say, Oh, you can't come in because you believed in mid-trib. Really. Uh, years ago, you know, years ago, we used to have pastors and teachers that came around. They used to have these giant graphs. I don't know if you've ever seen any of these guys, but they got the giant graphs, you know, with all of the eschatology and all the shapes. And there's it, a little part of it right now on the screen behind you, but I'm talking huge ones. And years ago, we used to joke, uh, we used to say that, you know, God is up in heaven. And he's got his son and the Holy Spirit, and they're looking at one of these graphs, and they're like, you know, as soon as I can figure this out, I'm going to go back and get them. But you know, right now, I can't figure it out. And as we, we make it so complicated, and it's, it's simpler than that. Uh, we talked to you last week about that Satan was the ruler of that original creation. I believe there were other planets. I don't have time to go into that tonight, but again, just my humble opinion. I could show it to you in Scripture. There were other planets that were inhabited. The Bible gives pretty clear evidence that the devil, somewhere during that prior age, before Adam and Eve, took a great deal of time. And again, to me, things have to be logical. So we, we, we feel pretty confident there is... There's no verse that says, you know, uh, in, in Genesis, you know, a third of all the angels. There's some references in Revelation, some other places that would lead us to believe that a third of the angelic hosts sided with Lucifer, as did the inhabitants of this planet, uh, because I believe there were inhabitants on this planet. Um, and, and so we believe that a third of the angelic hosts fell with him, in other words, and, uh, and we read about that, uh, as I said last week. You understand that if Lucifer as an archangel, an angelic being, had to travel throughout the universe and convince a third of the angels to side with him over God. He didn't do that in a weekend. Uh, I believe it was a subtle, long-term plan that may have taken thousands of years, may have taken a millennial, we don't know. Uh, but over time, he convinced a third of the angelic hosts that when he rose up, they would rise up with him. When we, when we speak up, uh, they will speak up with him. And, and so we read about it last week. I'm not going to go back there. Ezekiel chapter 28, if you weren't with us, read it. There we read about him being the worship leader. I believe you can actually find in Ezekiel 28, it says that his, his tambourine, his drums, his pipes, they were built into him. He was a creature that cr could create worship and music. Uh, there are many Bible scholars who believe he was actually the worship leader of the universe uh, and that he used music to worship 
uh, God and the, and the stars and the planets and all the creation sang praises uh, to God. We know that pride was his sin. He rose up in pride. I'll read you a verse about that in a second. But in last week we looked at Ezekiel, and I just want to mention it again because I had a couple of people ask me a question about it. It says, in the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your mind. Uh, the, the message translation says, in the abundance of your commerce. So I believe that there was actually commerce among the stars. The planets interacted with each other. I know some of you are out there right now. You're like, I knew it. That whole Star Wars thing is right. Battlestar Galactica, here we come. Where do you think these people get half their ideas from, in other words? Uh, demons know all about that time. <laughs> Fallen angels know all about that time. Uh, and so, yes, I believe that there were inhabited beings living here in us, and his trade, he became so powerful in the universe that he thought to himself, I can be like the most high God. Now, the good news is that Jesus is greater than the devil. Would you say amen to that? Amen. We're going to start tonight, uh, and we'll try and fill in some more blanks for you tonight. Not that you've got a lot left, but we'll try and fill in a few more. Uh, it says this in Luke chapter 10. These, this is a verse from the lips of Jesus Himself, You can't get any better witness. It says, And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. <laughs> Somewhere in the distant past, when Lucifer rose up, there was a war in the heavenlies, and he lost big time. And he fell from his position as to who he was as a glorified archangel or super angel, and he fell, and his name was Lucifer, Morning Star, and we now refer to him as Satan. We don't use that name anymore. It's funny, I, I'm old school, so I don't even really use Lucifer, even when I'm preaching or talking about him. I kind of don't give him that name. It's like you don't deserve that name anymore. His name is the devil. He's, the, he's, he's not Lucifer. He's not the son of light. He's not the morning light. He's darkness. He's the prince of darkness. Not Ozzy Osbourne. He is the prince of darkness, I'm just telling you, all right? Uh, so Satan made war in the heavenlies on God's kingdom, and he was cast down. Uh, I'm going to read to you one verse. It's not in your notes. I'm sorry, but I just dropped it in this afternoon. Isaiah chapter 14, if you want to write it down. It's Isaiah 14, 12, and 15. It says this, How you have fallen from heaven, Lucifer. And I, I put Lucifer in there. In the King James, it actually says Lucifer. Um, in the Amplified Version, it says, Star of the Morning. So it gives him that, what the Hebrew word actually means. Uh, but it is, it is Lucifer. How, how have you fallen from heaven, Lucifer? Star of the Morning, Light Bringer, Son of the Dawn. I, I, I don't want to give him more credit than he's due, but he must have been an incredible creature. God made him, in other words, and he had musical instruments in him. And we read about him last week. His, his being was studded with sapphires and diamonds and jewels. And, and he was the king of this planet, Earth. Um, people obeyed him. And I believe, as I said, he had great commerce in the universe. It says, you have been cut down to the ground, you who have weakened the nations. Um, now, you could take this verse to mean that Satan continues to weaken the nations, and I think he still does. But this is talking about a history of the devil. And so for me, it's just another verse that indicates that there was a planetary system before our system. Because it says here that this is before he fell. And what does it say? You weakened the nations, king of Babylon. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly. You remember we talked about this two weeks ago? This is that assembly that God has in the heavenlies. We don't know a lot about it. We know some stuff about it. Some of it's a mystery. But it appears to be like a council chamber where God sits and he listens to different angelic beings from around the universe and gets reports and hands out assignments and all kinds of cool stuff happens there. Lucifer has access to that room. Satan has access to that room. Um, and I believe still does. I know some people don't. I'll show you why I think he does. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. He still comes before God. When you mess up, the devil is the first one to tell God you messed up. Not your wife. I know you think it's your wife. She tells the pastor. <laughs> Lucifer tells God. Uh, it, it says, I, I will ascend to the heaven. I will rise my throne above. I will sit on the mount of the assembly. And no, it's not in the assembly. On the mount of the assembly. I believe in the assembly, there's some kind of mountain. God's throne is on it. He sits above in the assembly. And Lucifer said, I'll sit on the mountain in the assembly. In the remote parts of the north. 
Where that is, you can figure it out. But anyway, uh, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But in fact, you will be brought down to Sheol, to the remote recesses of the pit, the region of the dead. This is one of the Old Testament names for uh, a place of the dead. It's not hell. Um, it's not purgatory, but it is a place where evil people are kept. It's the pit. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in, in a few weeks to come. So here we see clearly in Isaiah, again, I believe, that there's an indication that Lucifer ruled over kingdoms, that he thought he would be like the Most High, and he's cast down. Now, just a couple more verses, and I, I hope I don't bore you. But my, I got home last week, and my wife said to me, it was really great tonight, because I, I like to get a little positive feedback. So I don't ask. You know, I just I sit in silence, and I wait. And she knows I'm looking. And she was, no, she's my best critic because she'll tell me you went too long, you were this, you joked too much, you offended some people. She's very, she sticks up to you all the time. She's like, you offended some people? I'm like, they're not smart enough to get that. Don't worry about it. Um, so, <laughs> see what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and so uh, she says, you know, so last week she said to me, it was really, really good. But she said, here's what I felt. I felt like you were going 1,000 miles an hour like you were trying to get through everything to kind of lay it all out. I said, well, I wanted to get to the graph. I wanted to get to the picture of the globe, you know. And she said, I just felt like you were going so fast. So I'm not going to go 10 miles an hour tonight, but we're going to slow down a little bit. And I'm going to read a little scripture, and I'm not apologizing for that. But I don't want you to leave here and say, I don't want you to talk to somebody a year from now and say, well, you know, this is what I believe, and this is what the devil is up to. Why do you believe that? Well, my pastor told us, no, 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 no. I want you to be able to say, oh, let me get my notes out. Hold on. Guess what? Right here in 2 Peter chapter 3. So we're going to read a little verse from New Testament just again to just kind of solidify the fact that I'm trying to help you see tonight. Uh, this is New Testament, 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, people are again making accusations. They always do it. It says, and saying, and the people were saying, where is the promise of his coming? What has become of it? For since the fathers fell asleep in death, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. This is that word bara again. From the beginning of the creation, something made out of nothing. For they willingly... Now here's what the Holy Spirit says about these people who are asking this question. So this is not them still speaking. This is now the Holy Spirit picking up the, the conversation and kind of responding. These people who say this, that where is Jesus? I thought Jesus was coming back. This is, uh, uh, Second Peter's written, uh, I don't know what it is, 60, 90 years after the death of Christ, and people are already saying, I thought Jesus said he was coming back. <laughs> it's not on our time schedule, it's on his. It, it says, for this they willingly are ignorant of, or, or they willingly forget, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, amplified adds, that the heavens existed long ago. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Different earth than we're on. And here's, for me, verse 6 is like the clincher for this. Uh, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. It was totally destroyed. Now we know that's not... The Noah flood, because the world was not totally destroyed. Mankind wasn't destroyed. Noah survived. We're still here. Animals survived. So the world didn't perish in the flood of Noah. It was a wicked flood, but it wasn't a damning flood. It, it says, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished and was destroyed. But the heavens and the earth, which are now present by the same word, are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. I told you a couple weeks ago, I believe that the earth will actually go through, because everything in the Bible is about typology and it all fits together like, wow, no one could have ever written that and put it together. This is why in the church of Jesus Christ, you remember what we said a couple weeks ago, that the church, through the church, God is revealing the mystery of the universe to the angelic hosts. In that assembly, they are sitting tonight in that assembly going, oh, that's what God was doing. That's what God is up to. They have no idea. He's God. But through the church, he reveals. So what do we have in the church? In the church, we have when you get converted, uh, we have a baptism in water. We totally immerse somebody in water, signifying the old life and a new life, the old earth and a new earth. And in the book of Acts, we see Jesus goes up into heaven, caught up into heaven. He says, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Go, go to the upper room, wait. I'm going to pour out my Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, which you have known, but now he will dwell in you. 
So now we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And what's the manifestation of that in the New Testament is tongues of fire fill the room. It's a baptism by fire it is referred to sometimes as. And so here we have in the, in the scriptures, the earth has had its water baptism. I believe it was at the end of Lucifer's reign when God violently threw him down to earth and destroyed the earth and many of the other planets. And I don't want to get, this is just my humble opinion. I think it's why when you look at certain planets, they're, they're pockmarked with meteorites. And, and you say, how, come nobody, how come no meteorites have hit the moon since recorded time? But there's potholes all over the moon. Because <laughs> I believe there was a war in the heavenlies. The planets were disrupted. The universe was brought into chaos. Lucifer was cast down to the planet Earth. And God punished the Earth by covering it with water. He flooded the whole Earth. Everything died. No life existed. Um, and one day, and this is what I said to you two weeks ago, was that we know from the book of Revelation that after the great tribulation, after the millennial reign of Christ, uh, the Bible says that the city of God will come down and there will be a new earth and a new heaven. We're going to have a new earth one day. because, And I, I'm going to get, now this is just my humble opinion. If you came and saw me, I could probably show you a couple of verses in the Bible that would substantiate it. But um, I believe that on the new earth that we'll get to in just five minutes here on the new earth there will be no oceans there'll be no seas like we have today because there were none on the first planet uh, and, and so millions and billions more people could live on the planet uh, because there will be no oceans there were no oceans on the first planet there were lakes there were rivers there were streams but there were no oceans there will be no oceans on the new earth that God makes there will be during the millennial because it'll be this planet but that new earth that God makes and the new heavens because what God will be doing is in that act through the church, <laughs> through the bride of Christ, that's who you are. <laughs> God will restore the universe to what it was before Lucifer sinned. He'll put it back exactly like it was. And you'll say, man, that took a long time. Relax. I didn't finish reading. He says, but the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished and was destroyed. But the heaven and the earth, which are now present by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire uh, 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 against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. So you and I are freaking out. This is going to take 7,000 years. God's like, it's a week, guys. Relax. Seriously. I mean, that's, that's exactly what it's saying here. For God, it's like a week went by. He's like, oh, that's, is that over yet, earth? Is that all done? Those humans done yet? It's a week. In, his, in the scope of eternity, it's nothing. It's a drop in, the, in, in an ocean of time, in other words. Well, no time. Uh, that's another whole subject matter, but no time. <laughs> no time, no time. We're going to live in an age with no time. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, one more proof, just because I like three, because I'm a Trinitarian. Uh, in the book of Isaiah 45, verse 18, it says this, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, created, bara, out of nothing I created the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. Uh, in the Hebrew, it literally means that, and so that's why in brackets the Amplified says, he did not create it to be a wasteland. I am the Lord and there is no one else. So here again we have God kind of putting his stamp of, I made the earth and I didn't make it junk. I didn't make it trash. I made it a beautiful place to be inhabited. Um, and so uh, <laughs> I, I believe this proves that there was a world before our world. Um, uh, how long that earth is there, we, we don't know. Um, which brings me to my next little cool slide that Jason made for me uh, with some little planets on it. And that's got some more blanks for you to fill in there. It's the middle one. It's the dark one. It's covered in water. It's covered in darkness. Uh, it's referred to as the, the chaotic age. Um, and we come out of it in Genesis 1, 2. And I'll read that to you in just a second. But I, I want to give you a second just to fill those in. This is the, cha the chaotic age of the earth. And this is referred to as the earth's water baptism. Now... We have no idea. I've searched most of my adult life. If someone can show me, I'd be happy to see one or, or learn. But I've never, ever been able to find anybody that could substantiate how long either one of these two periods are. Um, I don't know how long the earth was in its chaotic stage. It may have been a billion years. I don't know. 
You've got to remember that a billion years sounds like a long time for you and I, but that's just one summertime for God. So one season, one summer went by. I don't know how long it was in darkness. I don't know how long it was covered with water, uh, but it was not a pretty sight, and most of the universe around planet Earth was in total darkness. So freezing cold, covered in water, ice age. You can come up with all the theories you want to come up with, those, but a lot, a lot of time went by. We also have no idea how long the age was where Lucifer ruled this planet. We have no idea of what the inhabitants were. Uh, we do know this, that whoever those inhabitants were, because I believe there were inhabitants on the planet and on other planets, um, I do believe that they may have had some human form, but they were not like God, because when God in Genesis makes man, he said, let us make man in our image. And I, I believe the reason that that is referenced there is because it's the first time God is doing it. Because God needs a vessel that his son can come through. And we'll get into that next week probably. But, so God has to make man in his image so that the God-man can come through that race of people. So I believe that the people who were here before Adam were not made in the image of God. I don't know if they had a soul. I don't know if they had a spirit. I don't know if they were Trinitarians. I don't know what. I know we're body, soul, and spirit. I don't know what they were. Now, I do know this, that everything God makes is eternal. So whoever those beings were, they were eternal. Now, I'm going to enter into one little phase here where this is just my humble opinion, and it doesn't matter if you believe this. It's cool, okay? Uh, there are two schools of thought that demons are actually the angels that fell with Lucifer. That when we see people today in the New Testament or we see people in our lives, I've encountered people that are possessed by demons. I've been in service. I've been in someone's house where we cast demons out of people. Knows I've seen people manifest some of the goofy things that Hollywood makes fun of. But I believe that demons can still inhabit human beings and possess them and control them. It's not pretty. Um, uh, and it's usually violent and it surrounds a whole lot of other things that go on in a, in a really bad way uh, in their lives because the devil is just to destroy and he doesn't care about us. He has, a, he has an end game to destroy us. It is my humble opinion that angels are not demons. And the reason that I believe that, so I'll give you the reason I believe that, is because wherever we see angels in the Bible, they are a different race of people than human beings, and they have a body. They function in a bodily form. Now, can they transmute? Can they change the appearance of their bodies? Can they possess uh, animals and different creatures? Yes, uh, because Lucifer enters the serpent and speaks through the serpent. So I, I don't know what kind of power angels have, uh, but I do know this. They're of a different species and a different type than we are. And we know, because we taught on this four weeks ago, that getting way off track here, but stay with me. We taught on this four weeks ago that there were some angels that uh, before the flood of Noah came down, the Bible says they left their first estate. And it doesn't mean they left heaven. They'd already been kicked out. They were fallen angels. It means they left up, they gave up the form that they had and they slept with human beings. They slept with women. And they created the giants that we read of in the Old Testament. Half, in, half angelic, half human being. So, uh, it, for me, I struggle to believe that angels are running around trying to possess human beings because they have a body. They can function without a body. So, it's just my, my own little thing. So, you, it doesn't matter. If you believe angels are demons, fallen angels are demons, that's okay. I, I never want to meet one. I've only talked to one on rare occasions, and when I have, I've cast them out. So, I, I don't want to get to know them anyhow. So, if I get to heaven and God says, hey, Mark, you were wrong about that. They really were angels, fallen angels. I'm like, cool, great. I'm still in, right? I'm not, getting, not in for that, right? Um, it is my humble opinion that demonic spirits are the spirits of the pre-Adamite race. That they are the beings who lived on this planet and served Lucifer. So they, they rose up with him against God and God punished the planet. And they died physically, but because they're spirit beings, their spirits are still alive. And so they have no temporal body. And so what they long for is anything to possess. Because to be unpossessed or to not have a body is torment to them. This is why the demonic in the Gadarean named Legion said, don't send us back to the pit. Let us enter into those swine over there. They'd rather live in a pig than they would go back to the pit and be disembodied spirits again. And you see some of this in modern uh, mystique and movies and everything else where, where you know, you, we've all seen movies where what? Where the spirit can't get free. It can't go to where it's supposed to go to. And it's in torment because it can't go to its final resting place. I believe that comes from this demonic race of beings that 
are submissive and subservient uh, to Lucifer, and they long to possess a human being. Um, I also believe, now this is just my total, uh, uh, this is totally my opinion. I, I can't give you chapter and verse for it, but it comes from 35 years of experience in pastoring and dealing on more than 10 occasions with people possessed with demonic spirits. When people are possessed with demonic spirits, many times what you'll see is excessive violence, excessive nudity, and excessive sexual interest. Um, uh, and, and so I believe that, that that world before Lucifer was a world that had given itself over to Lucifer and was, it ran rampant with sin uh, and immorality. And those demon hordes still seek to manifest that behavior. And so many times when a person is demon-possessed, you'll see them rent their clothes. They'll be nakedness. They, they just want to be naked and they just want to... <laughs> and they want to do perverse sexual things. And there's all kinds of perverse sexual behavior that sometimes is involved with it, uh, which is one of the reasons why... Oh, watch me slip this in here now. <laughs> which is one of the reasons why we encourage men, especially, do not play around with pornography. And don't think that you can look at it and it doesn't affect you. And don't think that you can look at it and forget it. Because if you're a man sitting here right now, and I ask you to, you can go back and think of, and look at, and you can picture in your mind right now something you looked at, I hope it's 10 years ago or 20 years ago that you shouldn't have looked at, but you can still see that like that in your head. Uh, and I believe that in that realm, there are demons that, that work and manifest and do these things. Uh, that's, this is why the Internet's n number one uh, maker of money and everything else is pornography. And that's the number one thing on the Internet is pornography, and that's more than any other business. Uh, we, are, we are possessed as a nation with some of these things. Um, the devil, the, the Bible clearly shows us that there are demons who manifest sickness and illness because they love to torment the human body. Uh, and so sometimes there will be people who are constantly sick, constantly lament. They'll get over one disease, they got another disease. They, they're riddled with uh, and all kinds of maladies. I am not here tonight. Do not leave here tonight and say, Pastor Mark said, all mental illness is demonic possession. But I also believe that there is much mental illness that is demonic possession. Um, and I believe that I, I've been in uh, mental wards and, and in psych wards and seeing people that I don't, haven't had a doubt in my mind. There's nothing clinically wrong with that person. They're possessed of a demonic spirit. Um, and, and again, you only have to read the New Testament. I'm not telling you something here that's like, whoa, he made that up. No, it's in the New Testament. Uh, there's a young man full of demons. What did he do? He cut himself. Um, and so sometimes when you see some of these manifestations and you see things, in other words, um, just, just get that book, War on the Saints. It'll help you realize there are some things going on in the world. Remember when we started with all this? We want to see God clearly. We want to be in His presence because then God can reveal the truth of us what's really going on. So that when you look at something in your home, when you look at something in your life, you're not looking with just your human spectacles. You, you've picked up the spectacles of the Word and the Holy Spirit and you say, ah, look, I'm making this decision and this doesn't line up and that's not scriptural and that's not. I wouldn't have even seen that if I didn't put these glasses on. Thank you, Lord. For, the, for your word, for the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be led astray. The Bible says that, listen, the Bible actually says that there are demonic spirits that will enter the church and they will teach doctrine in the church. Doctrines of devils, it's called. Demonic doctrine in the church. Um, and, and I know somebody's saying, whoa, <laughs> demonic doctrine. Yeah, uh, false doctrine. And it'll become manifest in the church and lead a whole church astray or split a church. I've seen churches split by demonic power. Um, and, and destroyed. So this is not something that we should play around with. Uh, now, please, 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 do not, do not send me an email. I don't have chapter and verse. Everything I've just explained to you, I got some verses in this. That it's my humble opinion, and it doesn't matter. If, demon, if, if what you read of in the New Testament as a demon, you want to believe that's a fallen angel, and that's what it's doing, that's okay. I can tell you this. Fallen angels and demons, they all work for the devil, wherever you want to call them. I happen to believe they're disembodied spirits from the pre-Adamite world that are striving to live out another life. Um, and this is why, the, why do you think the devil hates human beings? Now, he hates us because he hates God. I mean, duh, that's a given. But the reason he hates us so detestably is this, is we have his planet. God gave this planet to Adam. He gave dominion to Adam. Now, Adam lost it. Knucklehead, listen to his wife. No, no. <laughs> Adam and Eve lost it, in other words. They lost the dominion. Uh, the Bible says that Lucifer is the god of this world. He still has great sway, has great power. But we don't have to fear him. Amen? Amen. So, 
if you believe and if you open the door to believe that in the original earth creation of Genesis 1-1, that that earth could be 40 billion years old, 80 billion years old, 400 billion years old, I, I have no idea. I, I don't know how you'd pick a number based on God is eternal. And can I just drop this on you too, because I believe God's very logical. Could you really get your head around the fact that there's a God who can make something out of nothing? And the only thing he's done in all the eons of no time is this little 7,000-year thing called humanity. And that's kept him entertained. We're like ants in the universe. If it wasn't for the fact that Christ came through us, we're nothing. Uh, we are the tool that God is using to write the universe. Uh, that's the great mystery of the church, but I'm glad to be a part of it. Amen? But for me to believe that God did nothing for like 800 billion, gazillion, zillion, zillion, zillion years, and then one day was like, I think I'm going to make this planet, make some humans. I want to make them in our image. That's, no, 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 no. It was not an accident. God was had a plan to put right what Lucifer had destroyed. But if you open your mind to believe that this planet is that old, uh, without getting into a great conversation about it, in other words, it, it is not hard for me then to begin to see whether it's an ice age or an iron age or dinosaurs or any of these things, that they were on that pre-Adamite world, that they existed here before we did. And you don't have to get your head all around, well, you know, it's not really a dinosaur, it's a fake, you know, carbon-14 doesn't work. I've heard Christians, you know, they just want to put down, science doesn't work. To me, it's much easier to answer someone and say, I got no problem with dinosaurs. They were just here before us. They were in the pre-Adamite world. That's why your kids play with them, because the demons love those dinosaurs. That was their pet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is interesting to me, though, that there's a fascination with dinosaurs in our culture, especially amongst children. <laughs> I see you going home burning your dinosaurs now. Relax. <laughs> Relax. I got rid of my Halloween candy. Now I got to burn my dinosaur. <laughs> help, help. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, that's the backside of the gap theory. It's the cool side because there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, I'm not going to reread it to you. I mean, I'm not going to give you the slide. You know it already. Uh, Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And I told you, that's the word bara. From nothing, God made the universe. We go through everything we've just gone through and we come to Genesis 1, verse 2. Now remember what Isaiah said, I am the Lord God, I made the earth. It's not a wasteland, it's not a place of uselessness. I made it to be inhabited. Say amen. amen. Well now Genesis 1, 2 doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> it says, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Amplified Version says the earth was formless, a void, a waste, and an emptiness. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, the primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. And the Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. There's two schools of thought. Again, this, these are things that don't really matter, but I just find them interesting. There are some who believe that the Holy Spirit is brooding over the waters because God is about to do something. He's about to recreate the earth. I certainly can see that as a logical explanation. Um, there are other, in much older commentaries, and I kind of trust old ones more than I do modern ones sometimes. In much older commentaries, what they'll tell you is, is that the Spirit of God had been brooding over the waters ever since Lucifer fell. He had been keeping Lucifer at bay. <laughs> He's the executive branch of the Godhead. And Lucifer had been sent to the earth and punished. And the Holy Spirit was like a guardian standing over the planet. You're not going to wreck anything else in this universe. <laughs> and so I, I kind of I like that one because it fits with my militant uh, style of living. But e either one is cool. As far as I know, all I do, what I do know for a fact is this is, somewhere at the end of that chaotic age, we see the Holy Spirit brooding over the waters of this planet. Um, and that brings us to another cool slide. Look, you're getting all these blanks tonight, really getting your money's worth, uh, which is, I believe, the present earth um, of Genesis chapter 1, verses 3, through Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, which we know as the creation story, and I believe it is the present earth on which you and I now dwell and live with some slight modifications based on the flood of Noah and some other things. But 
We'll, we'll, it's close enough to where you and I live. We could live on this planet. This is the planet that Adam and Eve lived on. It is the present earth. Got that filled in? Because I want to move along. Watch this now. Watch. Bara. I've used this name now for six, three weeks with you. Bara. It's the Hebrew word we translate as created. Now, again, without getting into you'd have to get out huge Hebrew books, and I've got them at home, and I've been through them all. This word bara, when it's translated in Genesis, has a, has a slightly different tonality to it and, and a tone to it because you have to realize when Moses as, is inspired by the Holy Spirit writes this word bara the word literally makes no sense to a human being you cannot make something from nothing I can make this bottle out of plastic but I can't make that bottle out of nothing make the bottle mm, I can't make the bottle give me some plastic I can make a bottle but, but it literally in the book of Genesis the word bara if you dig into it in the Hebrew it literally means from nothingness something is made and that's important for you to understand because only God can make something out of nothing. And aren't you glad he did that in your life and my life? Well, he made something out of something. But anyway, uh, it is used seven times in Genesis 1 through chapter 2, verse 4. Okay, uh, The passage that records all the creative ages that we're going to talk about right now. It is cor correctly, I believe, translated, created in each case. And when you start to see this, I mean, I'm going to read a little bit of Genesis. When you wa now you're going to watch for this word, and you'll see it. will go, ow, ow, ow. That's why it's there. Uh, in all other verses of this passage, in your King James Bible, or even in the Amplified Bible, you will see the word made, uh, which is the Hebrew word asha, which means to make something out of already existing material. So even in the creation story of Adam and Eve, what you're about to see is that there are something God creates, and something God makes. There are some things he creates from nothing because it's never been before. And there are some things that he will recreate or make from things that are already in the universe. So I hope it doesn't bore you. It's worth reading. Watch. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Genesis 1 verse 3. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made Asha, the firmament, the heavenlies, over the, over the planet. It was already there. It was just in total darkness. God turned on the light again. And God reformed it and remade it. It says, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. So the ocean from the clouds. God separated them. Okay, But they, are, they, they were preexistent. God separated them. Verse 8 says, And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let dry land appear. So now the earth comes up out of this sunken planet that you and I dwell on, and today most of our planet is underwater, and we know more about outer space than we do the bottom of our oceans. <laughs> And I don't think, again, now I'm just a freak. I'm a Star Wars freak. So to me, it's not, to me, it's not perplexing to think that man knows less about the bottom of some oceans than we do about outer space. Because I think at the bottom of some of our oceans, there would be evidence of these pre-Adamite races and pre-Adamite people. And God is keeping them hidden from us in this present age. So they're at the bottom of the oceans. The world would call it Atlantis. <laughs> it's just a pre-Adamite world. And it's, it's hidden from us. Um, that, that's not here. I don't, don't go home and say that's in Genesis. That's just Marky Mark talking to you, okay? It's just my humble opinion, all right? Where was I? And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. Now, I want you to notice here, God's not making anything. He says, let the earth bring forth grass. What does that mean? The grass is already there. It's just been underwater all this time. The seed was already there. That, that already pre-existed. God didn't make the grass. And people say, how could God do all that in six days? Well, a lot of it was already there. He was just, come on, come on, grow, come on. Uh, and so it says, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. Is this starting to make more sense for some of you? I know some of you know this stuff, but... Uh, uh, it says, uh, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. 
because the Bible, because God already knew when he did all this in the eons time, that somewhere way down the ro- road he would write in the New Testament, <laughs> whatsoever man sows, that shall they also reap. Because whatever the seed is, is what you're going to get. God doesn't change that for anybody. So if you're mean to your dog, you're going to have a mean dog. If you're mean to your wife, you're probably going to get a divorce. If whatever you plant, that's what you're going to get. Don't, don't think you can be mean and get kindness. That's just free. That's for somebody out there, I feel, right now. No. In the evening and the morning with the third day, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let there, them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And so it was. And God made Asha two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. So I believe the moon and the sun were already there. God had just turned them off. Just like God said, light be. It wasn't like God created the sun. It was already there. He just turned it off. Click, click, he turned it back on. Uh, And God made two great lights. Not out of nothing, he made them. And God set them in the firmament over the heavens to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day, over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good in the evening and the morning with the fourth day. I'm sorry if I'm boring you, but I gotta read it. It's just too good. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life and the fowl that may fly above the earth and the open firmament of the heavens. I'm not sure about this verse. There are some Bible commentators that actually say, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundant creatures, that there were creatures living in the water. In other words, that although the earth had been deluged and covered with water, the living creatures that were in the water, some of them survived. It doesn't matter, but either way. Now watch. Here comes Bara. Watch this. And God created Bara great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying be fruitful multiply fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth in the evening and the morning with the first day and God said let the earth bring forth living creature after its kind and it goes on cattle creeping beasts earth and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. That word made there is that word asha again. Again, some Bible commentators believe that when it says God made cattle and those things, that they had existed in the pre-Adamite world. It wasn't, a re, it wasn't a creation, it was a recreation. It was a remaking. So he made it from, there had already been that creature before. Uh, verse 26, now we get, this gets so cool, watch this. And God said, let us make man. Make, wait a second. It's, it's that word asha. It means let's form from something man. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So had there been human beings made before that were not in his likeness? That's why I said, as God isn't making man out of nothing, he's making him out of the clay of the ground, first of all, as well. It says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh, I will pause there to tell you, it's also my humble opinion that Adam and Eve were like Dr. Doolittle. They had absolute dominion over every creature. I I believe they talked with animals. I believe they could communicate. I I don't know how you have dominion over an elephant if you can't communicate with it. Um, And again, I'm just a logical being. So the other thing that indicates that to me is that when Eve walks through the cool of the garden one evening and a serpent starts to talk to her, she doesn't go, wah, and run home and tell Adam a serpent talked to her. It was a a normal occurrence. She didn't freak out because a serpent talked to her. So I believe that Adam had total dominion over the creatures. He named them all. He had control over them all. By the way, they all ate grass. The lion ate grass. The bear ate grass. Everything was a vegetarian. <laughs> I know that disappoints some of you meat lovers, but uh, it says over the fowl of the year. No, the, so God created man. Look at this. Same, same man being made. Now God says, let us make man, Asha, now let us create man, Bara. Let us make him out of nothing. Let's make a first. And it says, so he created them, male and female, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, and one little word that gets overlooked so often. What does that word say? Re, oh, replenish the earth. Not go forth and multiply. Not go forth and fill the earth. Go forth and replenish the earth, which means it had been plenished. I don't think that's a word, but you understand what I mean. Uh, And subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living 
thing that moveth upon the earth. Um, I got to let you go, but can I just give you two slides real quick? I, I love, love, love that part of Genesis. And God said, let us make man in our image and let us create man in our image. So he makes him from the dust, but he creates him to be a being that's never been made before. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says this, Then the Lord God formed, the Hebrew word is yastar, it means to mold, to make. That is, created the body of man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being, an individual complete in body and spirit. And I'll let you go home with this slide. Take a picture of it. Watch this. In Isaiah 43, verse 7, here's what it says. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created, bara him, for my glory. I have formed him, that's that Hebrew word that means molded, and I have, asha, I, I, have, I have created him, I've breathed into him, He's something that's never been before. So we are a being in form that may have been here before, but we are a being that's never been here before because we are made in the image of God. We have body, soul, and spirit. And so in this one verse, it says what? I have created him. That is, I have produced him out of nothing. I have formed him. That is, I have caused him to exist in shape or at an appointed time in, in, in space and time. And I have made him. That is... I made the final dispositions, the temperaments, the characters, and the arrangements respecting who we would be as human beings. If you come next week, you will not be disappointed. Next week, I'm going to show you how Lucifer finally gets his rear end kicked out of heaven, because I think he's still there. But I'm going to show you how he finally gets his little sorry rear end kicked out of heaven and banished from there. And what that means for us as saints and what that means for the world in which we live in. The, I'll show you next week that the Bible says when, when he's thrown out of heaven, when he's thrown out, it's coming, it's right around the corner. He still has access to that assembly right now, I believe. He's the accuser of the brethren. But the Bible says when he's cast out, now I'll show you the battle, I'll show you how he's cast out. The Bible says two things happen. It says those of us that know the Lord, this is why I believe in a pre-trip, it says those of us who know the Lord are in heaven, we will rejoice for the accuser of the brethren has finally been sealed. But it says, woe to those on the earth, for now he comes in great wrath. That's the great tribulation. And uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about that next week. And then I'll also give you next week, uh, before I get into what I, because uh, there's some other things I want to show you. But again, and I'm, I hope I'm not boring you. But next week I'm going to show you the difference in a dispensation. What the dispensation of law is, what the dispensation of grace is, what the dispensation of promise is. And so I'll show you those dispensations and how they span the 6,000 years of man's history. So I'll show you the 6,000 years that God is giving man. And in every one of them, there's a promise, a condition, and grace and mercy. And it's, it's fabulous. So I'll, I'll show it to you next week if you come. I'll try not to rush. God bless you.